New this morning, CBS News has identified hundreds of reports of sexual abuse that occurred at children's camps across the U.S. Now, this is the time of year when many parents register their children for summer camp. Families we spoke to say safety is one of their top priorities, but we found reports of more than 500 victims who were allegedly sexually abused at children's camps over the past 55 years. At least 21 of those cases surfaced this year alone. Jerika Duncan has been looking into the story, which you'll see only on CBS This Morning. Jerika, good morning. Good morning. You know, victims advocates tell us that the real number of abuse cases is likely much higher since many are never reported. We spoke with a woman whose son accused a camp counselor of abusing him back in 2009. For her child's protection, she wanted both of them to remain anonymous. After you took a shower, you'd put on your towel, and he didn't want you to wear underwear under it. This video shows a Texas boy telling a psychologist what a camp counselor did to him in 2009. It allegedly happened over the course of 12 days at an overnight summer camp named Camp Lahana. Yeah, he would check all the kids, but under their towel. Mm -hmm. Like, he wouldn't look under there, he'd just stick his hand up. When he returned home, the boy's mother says she knew something was wrong. He was a different kid. He was not the happy-go-lucky little boy that loved to play outside. He was totally different. He just wanted to lay on the couch. It wasn't until 10 months later that her son revealed a 20-year-old camp counselor named Matthew Beauvais had allegedly molested him. And what was your initial reaction? I wanted to throw up. I was nauseous. And all I could think of is to tell him I love him. It's a story that's been repeated again and again across the U.S. Combing through reports dating back to the 1960s, CBS News counted at least 578 victims who were allegedly sexually abused at children's camps. That's probably just the tip of the iceberg. John Conti studies child abuse and trauma at the University of Washington. He described how camps can sometimes create opportunities for predators. I think it's isolation from parents. It's out of a normal routine. Some kids are old, a little bit older, and they're feeling more independent, and they may have a false sense of security. More than 14 million people attend camps each year, but there are no national regulations for camps to follow. Eight states have no requirements for overnight camps to be licensed. Eighteen states don't require background checks for employees. Further complicating matters, more than 20,000 camp counselors came from foreign countries on visas last year. If they did have anything on their records, security experts say it might not show up in a typical background check. How big of a problem is this? I mean, it's, it's a big problem. Rania Mancarios has been working on this issue with Houston Crime Stoppers. If we can level the playing field, create national standards that all camps have to uphold to for accreditation, for licensing, for permitting, for certification, then you start making it more difficult for predators to find their way in. As for Matthew Beauvais, he accepted a plea deal for injuring a child, a felony. A judge sentenced him to 10 years probation and allowed him to walk free. I just remember at that point, I was not going to let this go. But Beauvais later violated the terms of his probation and has been in prison ever since. In 2016, the family settled a lawsuit with Camp Lahana for an undisclosed amount. The camp declined an on-camera interview but sent CBS this morning a statement saying they're proud of what they describe as their safe, outstanding summer camp experience. They say they remain heartbroken over this camper's 2009 experience. Camps are wonderful. Camps are part of growing up. My other children attend camp, but I check very carefully. Now? Now, the camp. I don't listen for a camp owner to tell me how the camp is. There are organizations like the American Camp Association and Presidium that monitor camps and issue accreditations based on safety. Now, the mother we spoke with suggests parents should check directly with those organizations to see if camps are accredited. So, again, she wasn't trying to scare people about mm -hmm. camps as much as it was you have to do the work. You have to have the conversation with your children and just be aware 
aware that these this things is, do this happen. This is so important, Jerika, you're doing this, because when favorite daughter, favorite son went, I did no due diligence about checking with the camp. I relied on word of mouth from others, from right. friends who had gone and had good experiences. Mm -hmm. That was good enough for me. It never occurred to me, well, let me really look at this camp to right. see what they're doing. Right. That's, that's so important that you're bringing this to light. Good point. Thank you, Jerika. And again, she's not trying to scare people, but we do need to pay attention. Absolutely. Very important. Thank you.